Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to gather together in your presence once more in this service. We declare this service open today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Sweet Holy Spirit, we ask that you come and lead us through this service today. Bless everyone present here with us today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray and we thank you for everyone that's a part of this online service today. We ask that they be blessed abundantly for making out the time to fellowship with the believers across the world. As for the world that we will study, we ask that you open our hearts and our understanding to know more, to understand more, and to encounter and experience more. Bless us today beyond our imaginations and our thoughts. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen and amen. We began uh, a series of studies that were bordered around the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. We have looked at some of the lines contained. We have looked at in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We have also taken the time to look at the other phrases like the earth was without form and void. And on that topic, we talked about find your form, which we, by divine revelation, stated that it takes power to define a true form. Some have the form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And the Bible says we should turn away from such. For every divine form that you take and possess, it must be backed by divine power. And so the earth was without form, and for that reason, it was void. And we also have looked at a couple of other lines too. But today, we'll be looking at the last line of that verse of the scripture. It says, and the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. We know the Bible says, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. So for today's study, we'll be looking at that line, the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. So we are reading Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, like I always have told us in the past lessons, these verses contain a lot of revelation and information that helps us understand our spirituality as Christians. These were the early scriptures that were established from the beginning before sin came. You might as well describe them as the perfect text because at this point in time, nothing made has been defiled or altered by sin or by the devil. And so we are looking at the true form of our making here. And by understanding that form and how those issues were resolved and solved, we'll be able to know how we fit into God's kingdom program and plan. It says that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. If we were to read the third verse, which is a follow-up verse to verse number two, you will notice that as soon as the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, the next line that comes up is, and God said, and God said. So, God never said anything until there was a move of the Holy Spirit. God never spoke a word until there was a move of the Spirit over the waters. And that's why we need to understand this, because this will govern our Christian life. You see, the most expression of our Christian faith is by words. That's how we express our Christian faith. We pray with words. We preach with words. We sing with words. We communicate with words. 
is about over 80 to 90% of our Christian living. Most of the things that we are required to do in Christianity revolve around words, kind words, exaltation, comfort, building, preaching, prophecy, tongues. Even the expressions of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, they all revolve around words. But the challenge that we have heard is that over time we have had so much words that have been devoid of the power that should back them up. So much words that have not had the backing of the Holy Spirit. And that's the reason that most of these words spoken have had lesser results than what they should have had if they had the backing of the Holy Spirit. You know, when Paul was writing to the believers then, he said that the later killeth, but the Spirit gives life. He tells us very clearly that the later killeth, but the Spirit gives life. We can preach as much text, teach as much theology. But if we continue our Christian living, whether as a church or as an individual Christian, without the place of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we will be revolving around letters, which in itself, helpful but dangerous. These letters, or these words, are like water. Of course, you know the characteristics of water. Water is, a, is very necessary, very useful, very friendly, but should it become a flood or should it be part of a natural disaster, water could be very dangerous. Many have drowned in water, why many drink water. So water has been very dangerous as much as it has been very helpful. It depends on how you put water to work. If you dive into water unprotected without the capacity to swim, you drown. So water is useful. And the same thing goes with the word, the letters. But you must know how to energize the letter, make it live, make it positive, make it useful for every one of you. Now, when you pick this word of God, when you pick the word of God, for example, apart from the words that we speak, when you pick a text like this, there are so many kinds of revelations and teachings that can be made out of this. Some of them are strange. Some are uh, unbelievable. Some seem to be tilted towards certain doctrinal inclination. All of it, all of that. But when you pick a word like this, it's either going to give life or kill, depending on whether you submit it to the Holy Spirit to interpret and to help you understand. In that beginning text, the Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. The water spoken of there is the word. Remember the Bible tells us about sanctifying it to himself, that he might sanctify it to himself, a glorious church, by the washing of water by the word. So when the Bible talks about the word, a lot of time is referring to, uh, the, it talks about water. When the Bible talks about water, many times it's referring to God's word. When you read the Old Testament sometimes and you see water mentioned, a lot of time it is making reference to God's word. Like the lava in the Old Testament temple. If you read the Old Testament temple, you will see the lava where the people of God came to wash. They came there to sanctify themselves. And the Bible tells us that it is by the washing of water by the word that we are sanctified. So he said, Jesus himself did say, sanctify them with your word, for your word is truth. So that word is the water with which we wash ourselves, with which we are cleansed. That water you find at the very beginning. That's why the Bible also tells us that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The scripture tells us that water was upon the face of the deep. But water possesses power. Water is powerful. Like I talked about the river and the flood. A river is very powerful when it's still a river. An ocean is very powerful when it's still an ocean. A sea is very powerful when it's still a sea. But when it unleashes itself like a flood, it becomes very dangerous. Water is powerful. The word is powerful in itself. Power is contained in the word. Power is contained in the word. Now, how do you put the power in the word to work? You know, when Jesus Christ spoke in these days, he said, they asked, what word is this? For with authority and power, 
he commanded the unclean spirit and they come out. So they were able to identify that there was power in his word, that his words were with power. So having established that, how do you convey the power that is contained in the word? There is supposed to be power potent in every word that we speak, power potent in every word that we read, power potent in every word that we meditate upon. There's supposed to be potent power in every expression of words that we put out, especially when we do that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as Christians. There is power in every song that we sing, as long as words are involved. It's like that water. But how do you harness that power to make it effective? Now, Jesus revealed that very secret when he said to them that the word that I speak unto you, you see, they said, what word is this? For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirit and they come out. Now, Jesus has to tell them what is the secret behind the words that he speaks. And here's how Jesus puts it. He says, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Meaning that the words themselves cannot be powerful if they are not with the spirit. The word itself is a spirit. The word itself is propelled by the spirit. The word itself is conveyed by the spirit. Thus, in the beginning, before God said what he had to say, like, let there be light, he first of all had to wait. Waiting upon the Lord is important. As Christians, we must learn to wait upon the Lord. Sometimes we are so much in a hurry to talk. Sometimes we are in a panic situation. We are in a haste to, make, to express ourselves. The Bible says, upon, he, says he has kept this rock for us. He said, he that believeth will not make haste. It's important for us to come to that point in the life where you are not in a hurry to express yourself. Rather, you are ready to wait until there is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Then you can speak. So many wonderful sermons that Peter would have preached. So many wonderful teachings that Peter would have revealed. But Jesus said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. That's what Jesus said to his disciples. If you read your Bible, Luke chapter 24 verse 49. In Luke 24 verse 49, Jesus Christ told them, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. In Acts of the Apostles 1.8, he reminded them again. He said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you will be my witnesses. Witness it is done with words. So every single time Jesus is trying to let us understand that there must be the manifest presence of the Spirit before words can unleash power or words can release power. So when we are always in a hurry to talk, always in a hurry to express, even when we pray, how should our words be guided in prayers? The Bible says that we know not ought to pray as we ought, meaning that we don't even have knowledge of the right words to use, but the Spirit helps our infirmity. For he makes intercessions for the saints with deep groanings that cannot be altered. So you find that even the words that you utilize in prayers, which, is, which are your utterances, which is the water that you release in prayers, they are expected to be governed by the Holy Spirit. They are expected to be controlled, empowered by the Holy Spirit. So what I say is that the power is in the word. The power is contained in the word. The power is a resident in the word. But what force? puts that power to work, is called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is the personality. The Holy Ghost is the being. The Holy Ghost is that person. The Holy Ghost puts the power that is contained in the Word to work. You see, Jesus Christ, of course, is the Word of God. And even when the Word was put into Mary, even when the Word was put into Mary to be given birth to as a son, as God's only begotten son, Mary still had to wait until she be endued with power from on high. He said the Holy Spirit will overshadow thee. So even before the word came powerfully manifest as the Son of God, the word resident in Mary, Mary had to be overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. And before that word was it made manifest. So you cannot project word. You cannot let water flow and expect to have the power contained in the word, in the absence of the spirit. Now, the spirit plays the role of the wind, like the wind. It comes in like the wind. So when you hear the word, is like the water, and the spirit is like the wind. When water is resident and it's calm, when the wind is calm, most of the time you find that the surface of the water 
is calm. It is the move of the wind that picks the water up. Sometimes when the wind moves with that force, it creates what you might refer to as natural disaster. It harnesses the power that is within the water. It can pull that water and force it to overflow its bank. And with the force in which it pushes that water, floods can happen. Houses can be destroyed. Farmlands, things can be destroyed. When the wind picks up water, you've heard things like cyclones, like hurricanes. You've had those things like tornado. The wind is always involved. The wind is always involved. Even when you think about a wildfire, how does a wildfire spread? Before a wildfire can actually even spread and cause destruction, the wind is involved. So the word rauch or the word pneuma, meaning spirit, also means air and wind in the original Greek. And the word rauch, the word pneuma, meaning wind, meaning spirit. So the word of God is the water. The wind and the spirit itself, that's the wind. So if you got a word resident, how would that word become powerful? If the spirit of God takes the word and enforces it, you find that there will be power in it. Even God said, my word that proceeds out of my mouth shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish the things where to I send it and shall prosper in that which I... So what is going to enforce that? It's the spirit. Jesus said, this, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. So God does not discharge his word as just grammars or as just letters or as just a collection of alphabets. When God speaks, God releases his spirit. So every time God is speaking, God is releasing his spirit. God is releasing his spirit as he speaks. So when you sing, when you sing ordinary songs because they are beautiful rhythms and lyrics and they are not with the backing of the spirit when it is released, Something is missing. They will only be uh, appealing to the ears, but they will not have the force to deliver a result. So you can sing healing song without the backing of a healing spirit. You can sing songs of deliverance without the backing of the, uh, the, the, the spirit of deliverance, the spirit that brings deliverance. Back. You can sing songs of blessings and prosperity without the spirit that enforces prosperity. You must begin to revisit these, these principles. Am I having the backing of the Spirit? So Paul said, we should sing and make melodies in our hearts to God. Singing, and then he emphasized again, he said spiritual songs. He, he just, didn't just say sing songs. He said spiritual songs. What are spiritual songs? Songs are not just, uh, spiritual songs are not just songs that you write because they, are, they feel churchy. But songs that are linked up and connected with the Holy Spirit. And even when you have to sing the song written. You need to sing it with the full presence of the Holy Spirit. This is how you have a backing when you're singing, when you're ministering. From the writing of the song itself, it is inspired by the Holy Spirit. So the delivery of the song in the church, it is inspired by the Holy Spirit. At all of these occasions, the Holy Spirit is in the center of that music. Some, somebody did write a song and said, Jesus in the center of it all. God's word is going to be there to, be, to deliver or to provide the power. But the spirit must be there to activate it, to make it work. Like the water, you need, it needs the wind to harness its power. It can destroy almost anything. The force of water can destroy almost anything if the wind picks it up and sets this in motion. If the wind picks up that water and sets it in motion, Something can happen. The wind alone, the wind alone can get into places and create and cause disaster. Imagine when the wind is now mixed up with water and is now spinning at a very high rate and force. If any ship or any building that gets in its way, it rips it apart. That's how powerful it is. It harnesses the available power and does what it has to do. So the sicknesses that have troubled you, the word of God is resident to heal. All that we need is the move of the Holy Spirit. So that by the time it begins to move, it will take that word 
and rip that demonic spirit apart. And I pray that every infirmity that is in your life that have ever inflicted you, hurt you in any way, may they be taken away from you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the Spirit of God put an end to them in the name of Jesus Christ. That today, you will encounter something very fresh and the Holy Ghost will begin to walk in your life. So how do we get this done? First, you must be ready to invite the Holy Spirit. You must be ready to invite the Holy Spirit. I told us of how God had to wait. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up with wings as eagles. And the Bible tells us that the Lord God had to wait. And then the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the water before the Lord God said. So wait. Learn to wait. The apostles had to wait. Always be there and say, Lord, what kind of words will I pray if the Holy Ghost is not there to pray with me? What kind of Preaching, will I preach without the backing of the Holy Spirit? Or what kind of thing will I say without the Spirit being with me? So, I have to. The moment the Holy Ghost came upon people like Peter, you can see the kind of power that it added to the word that they were speaking. Peter would have preached a powerful sermon nonetheless. But how effective would that powerful sermon have been in the absence of the Spirit that puts that power to work? So, the Holy Ghost makes a whole lot of difference in all of this. So, you wait for the Holy Spirit. You must teach yourself to wait. You must teach yourself to say, Lord, I'm waiting for your spirit to inspire me so this word in which I will speak will be powerful. You must wait on the Lord. You must also be able to invite him. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, Spirit of God, we pray. Come in your own special way. Let him come. Some of us have taken pleasure of the fact that we have been filled with the Holy Ghost and that's enough. Look at the apostles. They were filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. But they still returned again and prayed for boldness in Acts 4. And guess what? The Holy Ghost still came upon them again. That's why the Bible says fullness. Because every time in life you are discharging. You are discharging. You are using. You are utilizing. You are making use of. So, But you need to be full at all times. Meaning that you have to come for a refilling. A replenishing. That's how it works. Even faith is given by measure. Only Christ. The Bible says God did not give it to him by measure. So you need to come to God. And be refreshed again and again. And be filled again and again. So you need to be able to invite him. Invite him to come to your party. Invite him to come to your ministry. Invite him to come to your life. So that when you pray a prayer, power will follow that prayer. When you say, let there be, there will be sense. If we all as believers begin to give the Holy Ghost his place. And remember I told us also once that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. And that's the truth. Because Jesus said, ah, my Father, are one. God is one. And Jesus Christ says, I and my Father are one. So the Spirit of God is invariably the Spirit of Christ. The Bible says, if anyone has not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So if you are led by the Spirit of God, you are the sons of God. If you have not the Spirit of Christ, you are none of his. So you can see how that works. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Christ is the Spirit of God also. So at the end of the day, you are still putting the same Spirit to work. That's how Jesus arranged it. After he came, after the manifestation of the word on earth, the first comforter, who did he say was going to come after him? The second comforter, the manifestation of the same, his same manifestation in the form of the spirit. So he has come as the word and then he comes as a spirit to move upon the face of the waters, to move upon the face of the word. So in all of it, I'm, I'm encouraging you to seek the Holy Spirit. Don't be so much arguments, so much theological differences everywhere. Everybody is sound in theology. But we are not just after people who are sound in theology. As we speak now, we are looking for a church that is spirit-led, that is spirit-driven. We are looking for uh, ourselves. To, we are asking God to bring us to the place where we will be empowered by the Holy Spirit. So, submit. The next thing you need to do after inviting and after waiting is to submit yourself to the leading of the Holy Ghost. Remember what I quoted? As many as are led by the Spirit of God. So the Holy Ghost can be here, and then you, but you choose not to be in tune and connected with him. Therefore, he will not be associated with the things that you speak or say. Or will he be associated with empowering this word in your life? You need to give him a place. You need to give him this, a place. The Bible says, grieve not the Spirit of God by whom you were sealed unto the day of redemption. Tells you that our overall attitude, how we choose to behave, can offend the, the Holy Spirit and thus deprive us of the benefit of his empowerment. We will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes. But there is a possibility for us to grieve the Holy Spirit. And by grieving the Holy Spirit, we, he withdraws 
from us and allows us to go ahead and we keep talking sweet words, charismatic words. We push them, sound theology that have no divine backing in them. The Holy Ghost makes a whole lot of difference in our lives. So this, these are some of the things that I need you and I need every one of us to be uh, very aware of. So before we get into uh, prayers, note this, that you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and always, always ask the Spirit for help. Always. Because we have so much confidence, so much confidence in ourselves because I can speak, I can talk, I have the gift of the gab, I have grammatic ability, I can, I'm eloquent, I'm fluent. These confidence sometimes deprive us from knowing that that's why he goes to pick the babes. That's why he goes for the rock to sing the praises. Because some of this confidence deprive us of our dependence on the Holy Spirit. He said it is not by power, it is not by might, but by my spirit. He said you will see this plummet in the hands of Zerubbabel with the shouts of grace, grace unto it. He said the hands of Zerubbabel has laid the foundation of this house and his hands will finish it. So he's telling you, listen, it's one thing for you to be confident in your ability one another thing for you to be confident in your capacity. It's another thing for you totally, totally different thing for you to say, I, as much as I could have been confident in myself, I leave it all for the Holy Spirit. I commit myself to the Holy Ghost to help me. There is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. You submit yourself to the Paul said, the things that were given to me, I count them but don't for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Sometimes you look at yourself, you say, well, I'm a professor. But being a professor doesn't mean that because you have sound vocabularies, that that translates to the whole. That's why Paul said, the later kill it. You know what Paul also said? He said, my gospel did not come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom. Today's church and today's sermons and today's preaching you know, sorry to say, have been lately overwhelmed by grammatic progress. You know, as long as we can have the stained glass windows, the beautiful blessed, the flashy stages, the lights, and the beautiful things with some charismatic words and flurries and all, we have suddenly believed among ourselves that that's enough. That's enough. We have translated these things to become the presence of the and manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. And so there's a big difference between how it was in the days of the apostle and how it is in our days. None of us are, none of us here claiming perfection in any way or form. But we are saying that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ needs to be healed to get to its basis where we totally will begin to depend on the Lord and depend on the Holy Spirit as much as we are required to do. And I trust God and I know that if you and I as believers today will trust the Holy Ghost, we will see the impact in our lives. And if you haven't been born again and you are not saved, then you are depriving yourself from a whole lot. Because you might talk religion, you might talk morality, but that's not enough to make any difference. The Bible says if you're anyone has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his, totally none of his. It is the spirit of Christ in you that will make the difference. And today we will pray a prayer that will make that happen in your life. And it says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That scripture is for those of you who are out there say, I'm already a believer, I'm a Christian, I have received Christ into my life. And well, you know, we carry it like it's some kind of a title, some kind of an attire. But hear me, it says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So for you, who is not born again, who have not the Holy Ghost inside of you at all, he says, if anyone has not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. For you who claim that you are already saved, he said, if anyone... And all that are led by the Spirit of God, those are the ones that are the sons of God. And so you put this into balance. And we will pray prayers for these two sets of people today. And I want you to be a part of this brief prayer section that I'm going to have with you today. Remember, God said absolutely nothing until the Spirit moved upon the face of the waters. There's a reason He had to wait for the Spirit to unite with the world. He had to wait until there was the presence of the word and the spirit the water and the wind there was the presence of the water and the wind before he spoke in the word that's the word spirit rauch wind which we know in the greek as pneuma god waited for the water and the wind for the word and the spirit to be present before the lord god said and as we wait upon the Lord, we renew our strength. We become more powerful because then the Holy Ghost comes. The Bible says we shall mount up with wings as eagles. What carries us with eagles' wings? It is the Holy Spirit. Of course, it's the presence of the Lord. 
He lifts us up and He takes us into greater heights. I want us to pray this very moment. If you haven't received the Lord Jesus Christ or you think within yourself that you really need the Holy Spirit of God to be at work in you. The Bible says if anyone has not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of these. I want you to begin to ask him now and tell him, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I come to you and I repent of my unrighteousness. I, sur I surrender myself to you and I come to you as I am without one plea. Jesus, wash me clean with the blood that you shed at Calvary's tree. Cleanse me, purge me, and I will be whiter than snow. I lay all before you today, my life, my habits, my behaviors, my sins, my wrongs, my rights. I put them at the cross today and I ask that you will purify me with your grace. And I ask Jesus that you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me so that I will become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Fill me. Today I open up myself and I receive the Holy Spirit of God. I receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I receive the new life. I receive the new creation. Father Lord, I receive the Spirit of Christ and from today I am born again and I am saved. I am born again and I am saved and I am redeemed. I want to pray, pray for you right there now. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I make a prayer for your son and for your daughter out there that I've just prayed and I've asked for the Holy Spirit of Christ to come into him that he or she might become a new creature in Christ Jesus. I pray that Lord Almighty, that you according to your word and according to your grace will forgive him all of his sins. You said, whatsoever sin we remit on earth shall be remitted in heaven. And by virtue of this prayer, I announce that his sins were remitted, not by the things in which we have done, but by the grace in which you have provided. Father, we pray that you become sanctified and you become purified by the washing of water by the word. And, and Father Lord, we also now ask that your spirit will breathe upon him, will be on him and will feel him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Feed her, Lord, and let him or her become a brand new creature from now going forward in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to pray also for the church and for believers who have had the Holy Ghost in their life or who have been who have believed in Christ, who have come to the faith, but perhaps are not walking fully with the leading of the Holy Spirit of Christ Jesus. We want to make this intercession right now and I want you to pray. Even after now, please take a, a time and pray. Pray well and pray longer than the time which I am offering in the course of this broadcast today. But begin to pray now and ask the Lord to come to your church, to come to you, to come to your faith, to come. You are a believer in Christ Jesus, but you cannot go without His Spirit. You cannot speak without the Spirit. You cannot express faith without the Spirit. Heavenly Father, we pray and we surrender the church of the Lord Jesus to you. We surrender this believer who is coming to you, who is getting restored to you and saying, Lord Almighty, I don't want to speak words that are not backed by the Holy Spirit. I want the Spirit to be with the Word. I want the wind to be with the waters. Father Lord, I pray today that you will begin to bring upon this believer's life, bring upon this believer's life the reality of the Holy Spirit as you did in the days of the apostles where you empowered them, where you filled them with your Holy Spirit and you made the words that came out of their mouth to become powerful and they were able to heal the sick and they were able to cast out demons. Our prayer, Lord God, bring your Spirit upon the church. Your word says in the last days you will pour your Spirit upon all flesh. This is a part of the last days and so we ask that as you did in the days of the apostles, pour your spirit upon your church today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us have a revival. Let us have a healing. Let us have deliverance. Let us have a blessing. Let us have insight, inspiration, all that comes with the revelation and with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. As it was in the days of old, we want even a greater dimension in our day and time. For you said in your word that the glory of the latter will be better and will be greater than that of the former. And so we are saying that let a greater glory be manifested in our season. Let a greater glory be manifested in our time. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father come, Father come, Father come. Pour out your spirit. Breathe upon us Lord. Breathe upon us Lord. Breathe upon us Lord. Pour out the spirit of Christ upon your church. Upon the pulpit, upon the preachers, upon the believers across the nations of the world. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. 
so that our words will not be with enticing words of man's wisdom, but will be by the demonstration of the power and the spirit of the living God. Father, we thank you because we know that the Holy Ghost will be present in everything that the church will do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Lord, I thank you, mighty God, for that which you have uh, begun to do in our lives. And we bless and glorify you because we know that you will do exceeding abundant above all that we have asked or imagined. You said there is a spirit that is at work within us. You said according to the power that works in us, there's a power and there's a spirit that works in us. Father, let your Holy Ghost back every word that we speak. Let your Holy Ghost empower the words that come out of our mouth. Whether they come out in the form of prayers or they come out in the form of praise or they come out in the form of prophecy, or they come out in the form of proclamations or preachings. Let your Holy Spirit empower every word that proceeds out of our mouths in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring a healing now to that woman who is sick. Bring a healing now to our kidney. Bring a healing now to that woman whose blood pressure is rising. Bring a healing now to that man and that woman who is diabetic. I want Father Lord to heal and to administer healing to them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That condition of health that they have tried many, many medical solutions for and have not found help. Father, bring help to them in the name of the Lord Jesus. As we pray this prayer, right where that person is now, we speak our healing to take place in the name of Jesus Christ. Let him or her get up. Let that person get up from that sick bed and begin to walk sound and strong in the name of Jesus. We speak life into your body. We speak life into your bones. Let it come to you in the name of Jesus. Let financial answer come to that man and that woman that is in need of a financial answer. Let it come to you even now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let help come. Let help come as we pray. Let the Holy Ghost move into action and take this words and enforce it upon the life of somebody that needs help, that needs help divinely in the name of Jesus. Turn the elements of the earth to begin to walk for your people in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank the Lord Almighty for his word today and I pray that in your life the wind, the water and the wind will be in place. Let there be the water and the wind. Once there is the wind, when there is the water and there is the wind, there will be the force. Father Lord, thank you for this word and bring a blessing to the lives of your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who are offering this moment. Father Lord, we, I ask that you open the window of heaven and you pour out blessings upon them that there shall not be enough room for them to store in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you bless every work of their hands and cause every work of their hands to increase in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, for in Jesus' name.